Cheers and welcome to the third and final video of how to speedrun DSX Mankind Divided. Now in this video I'm going to show you a few minor time saves and after that the three major glitches we use in any percent runs to basically skip like I think 10 minutes of the whole game. So yeah let's get right into it. If you haven't watched the last video there is a discord for runners of all DSX games in the description. Since I talked about it so much in the last video, I'm going to start this one off by actually explaining what safe loading is. So if you didn't know, every Icarus dash increases the energy cost of the next dash. So if you dash a lot of times in a row, which of course will happen in a run when you want to go fast, the energy cost can ramp up to literally take up your whole energy bar. And the only way to reset this cost is to either wait about 8 or 9 seconds, or you guessed it, to save and then reload instantly. Because if you reload for some reason, the energy cost for the Icarus dash will not get loaded into the next save game. Now the problem is you can't just instantly walk after a loading screen. You have to wait about half a second or even a full second for the game to actually load you into the world, so to say. So it's actually slower to save load after every single dash. And just like the sweet spot at three or four dashes, personally I always save load after the third one because in my opinion the fourth one costs way too much energy. And also another thing to add is that you can't save and reload at every given point. There's some points where you just can't save, for example when you're in combat or right after Golem. But yeah, other than that, safe loading is an incredibly useful trick that you can also do in glitchless runs. Next up I'm gonna have some minor time saves that I didn't really include in the last video because I didn't think that it was worth it. So right at the start in Dubai you can save about half a second by pressing backwards shortly before falling down that one ledge. Your goal is to fall onto these boxes down there, because if you land on those boxes, your drop height will be just low enough so that the standing up animation doesn't trigger. Again, it's really minuscule and minor, but it saves half a second and I think it's just a swag threat. Another minor time save is every time you would activate the Icarus landing system, hold your takedown key instead. The Icarus strike actually has a much shorter animation than the Icarus land. Usually in any percent runs you only have the Icarus system at the very beginning with color and at the very end after you unlock it in Diwali territory. But if you want to go safe and not fear to die every time you drop down at least one meter then this is a good option for you. Alright, I still have one thing before we get to the glitches, and that is dialogues. Some dialogue options are actually faster than others. For example, in Ruckus dialogue it's fastest to go left left up left instead of any other option. Another example would be when you first meet Mochenko in Gollum, where taking left 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 is also slightly faster than all the other options. I'm gonna put all the dialogue options that we know of in the description. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the first real glitch that we do in the run. And it's actually happening right at the very start in Dubai. The idea is that you stack a bin and the pylon onto the generator next to it and then jump up the ledge. If you now turn left, you should see the bottom of the crane that's above you. Now walk forward and keep tapping forward a bit until you get pushed out left slightly to the ledge. Sometimes in practice you fall down, if it happens it doesn't matter, just climb back up and you're good again. Now tap jump to climb onto it and then walk forward until you can pull off a maximum height jump. If you turn right now, Jensen should automatically grab the upper part of the crane and you should stand in front of the crate now. Now pay attention to the way the crate swings. Every time it swings left, it's either facing you with its short end or its broadside. You are gonna wanna jump onto the crate when it's facing you with its broadside at the left apex. Now wedge yourself into that invisible corner and get launched the fuck up. I'm gonna mention how it works later on, but this trick is entirely dependent on FPS. You're gonna need at least 60 FPS for it to work, but the sweet spot seems to be around 80 to 100. Above 110 it gets slightly harder to pull it off, but you get launched way higher up if you do get it. If you don't get at least 60, turn down the graphic settings obviously, turn down the resolution, make it windowed if you want, and also looking down while doing the trick will also help to increase your FPS while you're doing it. If you're now getting well over 110 FPS, you can use programs like DX Story to kind of cap your FPS to a certain amount. I've tried around and personally for me it works best with 86, but you gotta have to find out what works best for you, obviously. If despite all efforts you simply can't get up to 60 FPS and lowest graphics and on a low resolution, just do the buy regular glitchless. It only takes like 10 seconds more and it's not that big of a deal. You should now have enough height to land on the roof with the crane on top of it. Now simply run to the east and drop down three times. The fourth drop should be through a collisionless ceiling. There's also this yellow tube thing that you can orient yourself with. After that just again drop down and turn left. Now just walk through that collisionless wall and then you should see four smashed windows from above. 
Now just drop down one of the four windows and complete the level as you would usually. But let's get back to the beginning. How do you get launched in the first place? To put it as complicated as I can, collision is basically just an object pushing back onto the player as hard as the player pushes onto the object. So if I run into a wall, the wall pushes back as hard as I run into the wall. In this case we have an invisible wall in front of us and to our left, so in the northeast. If we now push into that corner, the corner pushes us back in the opposite direction, so to the southwest. If you now pay close attention to the crate's movement, you'll notice that the crane's hook is actually moving slightly diagonal towards the invisible wall. If you now stand in that corner, the game can't push us to the southwest, because the hook's collision is there that wants to push us into the northeast corner. Since neither of those collisions can push you anywhere, the game just stacks the force onto the player. At some point the game decides to release that force into the only direction it does not have any collision, upwards. Since the physics engine runs the code for collision every single frame, you get more force stacked onto you at higher frame rates. And finally, to get into that position in the first place, you just need to look eastwards and slightly to the left so you can push into the corner, hold forward and then tap left a bit. Also you need to keep holding forward all the time you're in the air to actually get to that route. And if you're not high enough then just reload and try again. Now, with that out of the way, let's get to the second glitch, which is actually at the end of Garlem. So as I said in the last video, Rucker's conversation takes about four and a half minutes, and then you also have to get to the cutscene and run for enemies, and that's taking way too goddamn long, so you can actually skip it, which is very good. Because God knows, there's nothing more annoying than staring into the guy's face for four minutes while only pressing four buttons. So yeah, first we need a little setup. Just play Garlem as you would usually, until you reach the elevator. After the turret at the very end there is a bucket standing on a barrier. You need to grab that and just throw it into the elevator and then go up. Now at the top you're gonna see two railings left and right to the exit. You're gonna grab the bucket and then jump backwards onto the railing and then up again at like a ledge above the exit. Now with the bucket still in hand you're gonna wanna crouch and stand in the western corner. So like if you're looking at the exit it should be the left corner. Now here's where things get tricky. So quick save or just create a whole new save file. Ok, so now you should have a wall behind you and to your left. Walk as far back as you can and then press and hold A or whatever you've bounced straight left to. And remember, you need to hold that bucket all the time. Now flip the bucket so the bottom or the open lid is facing towards you. So while you're holding A, turn around 180 degrees to your left while still holding the bucket. Now while panning to the left, also look down a bit. There's this point where three metal plates intersect and your cursor should land on this. Usually that should be it and now you should be through the wall. If you're still not through the wall, try wiggling the camera a bit, pressing forward or jumping slightly, and if nothing of that helps, just try again. Sometimes while turning around the bucket will drop, and sometimes that's okay, but other times it can prevent the clip from happening, so if it's not working then just jump down and pick the bucket up and try it again. If you've clipped through it, immediately stop holding A, because you're gonna drop down to your death if you do. That was the first half of the trick, but now you have to navigate out of bounds. If you know the route and where to step it's really easy, but you know if you don't there's a lot of death triggers and bottomless pits, so it's really not easy at the beginning if you don't know where to go. Alright, so after the clip turn right so you're facing north. You should vaguely see the wall of a container and here's where you have to do like a leap of faith. Sometimes just jumping straight up works, but most of the time you have to run forward and then jump to get on top of this container. If you sometimes don't see the floor for a second or two, that's perfectly normal, you know you're out of bounds and the game doesn't expect you to see that container from this angle from over here. So yeah, just walk forward until you reach that awfully textured wall and then jump onto the container to your right. Then turn left and pass through two collisionless walls. After this, turn right again and then jump over a ledge to another container. You should now face eastwards, so walk through the collisionless wall to see a brightly lit clearing with like a blue roof thingy over there. Straight ahead and above you you're gonna see a few containers that are kind of overhanging. You wanna jump onto those, but you can't reach it from the blue plane. So instead jump up that ledge in the south and then Icarus dash over there. Now jump up once again and then walk to the northern ledge of that container. Here you have to jump straight up to grab an invisible ledge. Jensen should automatically grab it and if it doesn't then just walk back a fourth a meter or two and then it should work. Alright, now run straight ahead past that red satellite tower and then drop down. While dropping down you have to act fast because you need to reach the trigger for the cutscene. There are two that are really easy to hit with just an Icarus dash. One is down there on top of that broken steel beam and the other one is slightly above it on that dark ledge. In the footage you can actually see me missing the grab on that ledge over there, but luckily I got the cutscene anyway by grabbing the lower ledge. I don't know how that happened, but you know, 
it's nice to know that there's a backup strat anyway. Cool, now you gotta watch that annoying ass cutscene. Meanwhile, I'm gonna explain how the trick actually works. I'm gonna skip the explanation on how collisions work, because I already did that before. But basically, if you turn around while holding the bucket, the wall to your left slightly pushes the bucket inside you, and in turn, the bucket pushes you slightly inside the wall. Which means that you can slightly slide into a section of wall that was not supposed to be reachable, and thus doesn't really have a collision. So if you position your camera and yourself just right, then you can slip through the little crack that does not have a collision, and that's really neat. Alright, so the last two glitches are actually the same trick applied in two different occasions. For it to work, you need a scout weapon, so either the sniper rifle from Miller's apartment or the trank rifle from the very start. Also, you're gonna need a box to lean against and an innocent looking poor wall that you can just penetrate through. You're actually just glitching through it and not penetrating it. Please don't ban me. I'm gonna take this clip from London to explain it to you. First, you need to grab a box, and luckily, there's one just next to the helipad. Now carry it over to that fence over there. Turn around, walk towards the fence, crouch and then drop the box. Also note that small boxes have a few faces that you can't actually lean against. I don't really know why, but it just works like that. So if you can't lean against it, just pick it up and turn it around once and then it should be fine. Now lean against the box, pull out your scoped weapon and then look through the scope. Usually if you want to dash against the wall, it's going to show a red X. But in this case, if you look through the scope and then charge your dash, it's actually going to show the icon that it should work. The reason why this works is because every time you zoom into a scope of a weapon, the camera is placed slightly in front of Jensen. Usually if you walk into a wall and then zoom into your scope, the wall's collision should push you out of it. But the box's collision actually counteracts the wall's collision, so the camera is kind of locked in place behind that wall. And since the Icarus dash takes the camera's location at its starting point, the game thinks that you're behind the wall and just goes with the flow. Now that we're through that wall, I'm gonna leave London because I still give a shit about consistency and we're gonna go to the first time we're gonna use this trick, which is in Diwali, in Prague 3 or Curfew or whatever you wanna call it. In Prague 3, just play the Diwali section as you would in a normal run until you get to that cutscene. After that, make sure you have the optimized musculature arc, so the one where you can lift heavy stuff, and the Icarus landing system. Then pick up the heavy box and walk to the door in the edge of the room. Now stand with your back to the door and drop the box. So if you've played this game before, you're gonna know that Jensen is really picky about his cover. Sometimes he just doesn't want to lean against the box, but against the wall or against the door. Either that or he's just stuck in his rebellious face and just doesn't want to do what you tell him to do. So yeah, if Jensen eventually decides to lean against that box, pull out your scope weapon, look through it and then dash through the door as I showed you before. Afterwards, just jump down the hole in the small room you're in. Now just run through the sewers, get up the ladder and then walk to your apartment. Now back to London. Just do the same shit as I told you before to get behind the fence. Now that you're behind the fence, run straight ahead, turn 90 degrees to your right and then run straight ahead again until you reach that dark wall. If you now walk through it and then turn right again, you're gonna see a brightly lit semicircle on the ground. The left half of it actually doesn't have collision, so we wanna drop down that. Now that you've dropped through the floor, turn right quickly so you face southeast. Now you should see a square room and under that a dark tunnel, and you're gonna wanna aim for the part right next to this dark tunnel but underneath the square room. To get there, you need to dash at least twice in the air and then once more when you almost hit the bottom, so you don't get as much fall damage and you don't trigger the Icarus landing system. If you now run straight ahead to the ledge, you're gonna see a metallic grey ceiling slightly below you. Jump or Icarus dash on top of it and then run across it to get to that triangular hole. If you now hop onto that concrete ledge, you're gonna see a concrete block below you. Make sure you heal up before you drop down there, because you're almost gonna die of fall damage if you jump down. If you now look to the south, you're just gonna see a black pit, but that's actually Marchenko's boss room. You can charge an Icarus dash to get through that collision wall, but immediately afterwards turn around and run to the door as fast as you can. Because the thing is, if that turret spots you before you actually hit the cutscene, then the whole room is gonna be hostile towards you during the cutscene. Which means that when the cutscene ends, Marchenko is gonna stand right next to you and will probably kill you. So yeah, that concludes all the glitches we have in the run, so now you should be ready to go and practice your own anti-percent run. See you on the leaderboards.